Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to the big news. The topic for today's discussion: microplastics in Antarctica. Let us try and understand what is this topic all about. What is the context? According to researchers at New Zealand University of Canterbury, tiny particles of plastic have been found in freshly fallen Antarctic snow. What does the research say? The researchers took about 19 samples of snow from different sites along the Ross Ice Shelf, the largest ice shelf in Antarctica, and found microplastics in every single sample that was taken from this place. So, where is this Ross Island? the ross island is in this part as shown in the image and from the preliminary examination point of view also note india has a number of research centers world over one of the research centers in antarctica happens to be dakshin gangotri so remember the dakshin gangotri is the research center of india that is currently in antarctica why is the world worried about the microplastics in antarctica that is because the microplastics will have its own share of negative impact on antarctica microplastics have been found across the world from the deepest ocean floors to the peak of mount everest as well and researchers now say that this is for the first time that they have also found microplastics in the deepest areas of antarctica plastic was found in antarctica earlier as well but in this area of ross island which happens to be a remote area it is identified for the first time now the question is what are these microplastics microplastics are tiny plastic debris that are smaller than 5 mm in length tinier than even a grain of rice when we speak about the microplastics there are two kinds of microplastics one is what is called as the primary microplastic the second is what is called as the secondary microplastic what is this primary microplastics these are the micro plastics that are generally created and produced manufactured intentionally as per the will of the manufacturer so the microplastics which are primary in nature are tiny particles that are purposely designed such as the commercial use like the cosmetics noodles plastic pellets used in industrial manufacturing and in fibers from the synthetic textiles like the nylon so what is the primary microplastic a primary microplastic is one where you have an industrial body where you have the manufacturer who intentionally manufactures such microplastic so that it is used in one of the products then what we have is the secondary microplastic what is the secondary microplastic let's say for example you have a huge plastic let's consider it can be a fishing net or let's consider it can be a synthetic textile or let's consider a tire this happens to be one of the plastic material which is of huge nature but over a period of time because it is constantly hit over a period of time because it is broken down in the oceans by the sunlight wave action they are broken down into smaller fragments the smaller fragments even actually go on to become what is called as the secondary microplastics so secondary microplastics are formed through the degradation of larger plastic items like the bottles fishing nets and the plastic bags this occurs through the exposure to the environment like radiation from the sun wind and ocean waves so when we speak about microplastics these are small plastic materials that we see in the environment and they are generally less than 5 mm and we have two types one is primary which is intentionally created and then what we have is secondary which is a consequence of degradation of a larger plastic now what is that we have to understand what is the source of microplastic in the antarctica how did microplastics travel or get transported or reach the antarctica when we look into antarctica what is happening antarctica happens to be in the southern pole when we look into the microplastics they can come from the local sources like human research activity on antarctica remember in the first initial slide we did discuss about the research centers opened by multiple countries all these countries have their research centers as well we also have dakshina gangotri this happens to be a research center which is undertaken by india similarly every country also has its own share of research activities as well so when they have these research activities what do we understand we have the human presence and when we have the human presence they carry plastic with them and because they carry these plastics this can ultimately be broken down and may eventually lead to what is called as the secondary microplastic so the samples taken near the research stations closer to the human activity yielded microplastic densities nearly 3 times higher than those in the remote areas 
the most common was the polyethylene terephthalate which is used to make soft drink bottles as well as the cloth when snow travels in the atmosphere it binds itself to the airborne particles and pollutants which are then deposited on the earth surface and this phenomenon is also called as scavenging so what exactly happened because these microplastics happen to be very light they also have low density as well they might have traveled through the air from more than 6000 kilometers as well researchers argue that because there is human presence because there is human footprint in all these areas that is why microplastic may have been present in this particular part also remember when we speak about these local research institutions there can also be cloth owned by the staff there can be broken fragments of plastic equipment this may be mismanaged as well and you also have the wayfinding flags as well for example if there is a research center in one of the places in antarctica we do not know which is the safe place in antarctica so what do you have you also have the wayfinding finding flags so there will be flags that will be placed in this particular area so that people who are conducting the research activity know which is the safe area in antarctica so these wave finding flags which are made of synthetic polymeded fabric may also have been broken and this may have led to what is called as the microplastic collection so remember these are the possible sources as to where microplastics may have been broken or might be present in the region of antarctica now the question is yes the researchers did find out that there is microplastics in antarctica even in the remote areas so the concern that we have is that the microplastics have even reached the remotest corners of antarctica as well so microplastics which have previously found in antarctic sea and surface water have now been found in remote areas of antarctica this clearly goes on to point out that it may threaten antarctica's ecosystem in the near future these microplastics as we all know are not biodegradable and once they are found in the environment they begin to accumulate and this can be toxic both to the plants as well as the animals the report claims that the ingestion of microplastics by various life forms in the region from microorganisms like zooplankton to large predators the king penguins can disrupt their usual process and negatively impact the entire antarctic food chain added to it the presence of the microplastics plastics in antarctica can also worsen the impact of climate change ice sheets and glaciers are already facing rapid melting and the report suggests that the microplastics deposited in ice and snow can accelerate the melting of the cryosphere regions where water is in solid form like the planets north and the south poles so this basically goes on to show that the presence of the microplastics in the air also has the potential to influence the climate accelerate snow as well as the ice melting the study further shows the ubiquitous presence of all the microplastics not only on land and water but even in air in antarctica and when we look at other issues because of these microplastics the minute they enter into the system this may be eaten by the fish and these fishes may ultimately be eaten by the human beings and ultimately everyone is impacted the aquatic ecosystem is impacted because these are eaten by the human beings the human beings are also impacted and this microplastics may alter the reproductive systems in the aquatic ecosystem and can also cause inflammation and liver damage in the human beings as well and if this microplastics continue to haunt there can be water pollution in the near future and we may not be able to treat it ultimately disrupting the entire ecosystem what have been the measures that have been taken in the past with respect to the plastic regulation in antarctica in 1989 the commission for the conservation of antarctic marine living resources launched an international monitoring program to track plastic debris along the antarctic shore in seabird colonies and sea over the years these initiatives have contributed to the generation of field based data such for long term marine debris assessment so in the past they have taken some initiatives so that they can keep a check on the 
pollution of the plastic. We also have the International Association of Antarctica Tour Operators and the Association of Arctic Expedition Cruise Operators who have joined the United Nations Clean Seas Campaign. Together, they are working out and they are working out to systematically reduce the use of disposable plastic and other items in Antarctica. So these microplastics have been identified as some of the serious emerging threat and as a result, they have taken the measures and they will continue to take measures in the near future as well. What is the way forward? As of now, we have realized that plastic pollution has become ubiquitous, but there is a major flaw that we do not have enough amount of knowledge about how this plastic is reaching Antarctica, what is the pathway that it is taking, what are the distribution sources and how is that these microplastics and plastics are being transported into Antarctica. So identifying what these resources are, monitoring them constantly, conducting some research, collecting the data and coming up with mitigation strategies to tackle the plastic pollution in Antarctica is the way forward. Added to it, when we speak about the shipping industries, the shipping industries in Antarctica also are the major impact. Why? That is because the painting that is used in these ships may also become the pollutant. So going forward, there has to be a research that has to be conducted. We also have to find out alternative marine paint as well that is more durable and environmental friendly. As of now, this paint can also act as the pollutant. So going forward, we have to identify an alternative to the existing paint which is environmentally friendly. So making sure that the pollution is comparatively reduced by having enough amount of data is the way forward and in spite of all this there have been major impediments to reduce it what we also require is the funding so the global community will have to come together and should make sure that there is funding only to the Antarctic region we have different research centers in Antarctica there are people and as a result all these research centers and their countries will have to come together put in their money and ensure that there is no pull in this part of Antarctica. It is this that we have to understand with respect to this article. So that is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.